this is uh, Dr. S. P. Harsa from uh, Mechanical and Engineering Department, IIT Roorkee. I'm going to present today uh, as a lecture four of the topic of this, uh, you know, like the strength of materials. Uh, in that, you see, we are going to discuss about uh, more of, uh, you know, like the stress components that which we have discussed in the previous cases in the previous lectures that we found that if you want to describe the general state of stress in which you see you know like uh, if uh, like that there are total nine number of components were there including you know like the three normal stress component and the uh, six uh, shear stress components so if we have a regular structures like a unit cube or parallel pipe then it's pretty easy to analyze those things because you see you know like uh, the three stresses are there like sigma x x sigma y y sigma z z and then you see we have the six uh, different components like uh, tau x y tau y z tau x z and uh, the three uh, remaining components mean to say that you see you know if we want to describe the stress uh, for a uh, on an object or in component then uh, we need at least the nine component that's why you see you know like uh, we uh, you know like uh, found that uh, we need you know like the tensor stress to describe the stress for a point so you see you know like uh, this part which we have discussed so in this uh, lecture the basic thing is that if we don't have that kind of uh, you know like the structure means if we have you know like any radial structure in which even you know like uh, we discussed that uh, the cartesian coordinates were there or the cylindrical coordinates are there but if you are talking about a radial structure in which you see if you are taking any point q or you see you know like the points are there in that if you want to check the stress components then how we can or if we have an oblique plane means that if we cut the sections not exactly perpendicular to x axis perpendicular to y axis or perpendicular to z axis where you see we define the stresses if it is not there then what is the stress and how we can relate that stress to the uh, main stress like sigma x or tau y x or tau x y or all those components so this kind of uh, you know like the information which we are going to dig you know like digging from this chapter so first of all we, we are starting from the analysis of stresses in which uh, uh, this diagram has shown in this diagram you see this we have you see you know like the component any machine machine component which you see on over which uh, these forces are there so these arrows are showing that where the force application is there and as we discussed that the force is always defined by the point of application so you see here these are the point of application where the forces are acting and this is the q q is the origin you see you know like or we can say uh, that this is the point where we just want to check it out that what the stress components are there due to these uh, you know like the forces and you see you know like the stresses are nothing but the intensity of the resistive forces so how the stress distribution is there all across this domain so this is our domain which is neither par uh, you know like parallel or perpendicular to x y or z axis respectively so consider a point q in some sort of the structural member this like you know like as shown in this figure assuming that at a point you know like we have a q in which a plane you know like the strait of stress exists that means you see now we are going to consider all those stresses stress components which are you know like existing at this particular state so the strait of stress is described by the parameters sigma x sigma y and tau xy if you are considering the uh, the stresses in x as well as the y component so this is the one you know like the figure which uh, we want to analyze those things so if we go again back to the concepts then we found that this if you are talking about the xy plane then what kind of stress distribution are there so this these three stress components sigma x sigma y and tau xy are the dominating uh, dominating stresses and these stresses are always you know like distributing all across this uh, you know like the structure if you are considering the xy plane so this diagram gives you a clear cut picture that actually if we have this xy plane where you see this y and x is there so you know like uh, th this diagram shows you so uh, th in this particular you know like the picture we can easily you know like describes that we have sigma x all along this x axis okay so this is sigma x which is uh, of the nature of the tensile stresses and we have the sigma y which is also of the tensile stresses tensile stresses and that is why you see we are considering that this is a positive stress and uh, remaining part you see like uh, tau xy or tau yx uh, we are considering here that this is the tau xy you see here which tries to rotate this object in a clockwise direction so we need if you want to maintain the equilibrium of this object then we need the 
complementary stresses so they are coming from this domain so this is in this direction and these directions these two you know like uh, these directions shows that the stresses are there the shear stresses are there tau y x and they are always exactly equal and opposite to these stress component and that's why you see we can maintain the equilibrium within these objects and that's why you see you know like if you want to consider that you see the stresses are being formed because of the force application and the if under these stresses or under the force application if this object is well maintained you know like the equilibrium position it, it is only possible when all the summation of forces in x direction y direction as well as the z direction is zero similarly if we consider that okay if we have an origin point o let us say here and if you are taking moment about this point o either by this uh, shear stress or by this shear stress or by this shear stress or by this shear stress then we can say that yeah from all the four components of the shear stresses whatever the moments are there uh, 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 about this point o they must be equals to zero if we consider those things then we can say that yeah this is well maintained well equilibrium structure under the action of these forces under these three stress components so this is a common way to you know like common way of representing the stresses uh, for xy plane uh, uh, component because you see if we are considering the three dimensional then we need to consider as I told you that we need to consider all nine components the triaxial form of these in which the all three axes are mutually perpendicular but here only we are considering the two axes x and y where these three stresses are there because of the symmetry of the object we can say that it's pretty easy to describe all the state of strat by uh, with the using of these stresses so it must be realized that the material is unaware of what we have called the x and y axis so whatever the material is there respective of whether it's a you know like the uh, this uh, stainless steel high carbon steel high speed steel or any ductile material it is irrespective of that that what the stresses are there if we are saying that it's a ductile material or it's a brittle material like you see the cast iron or any harder material we can say that these are the stresses which are always being formed if it is representing of this nature means you see if you are apply those you see you know like the stresses like the normal stress component or we are, we are saying that the shear stress component then they must be there within those objects they are well settled within these those objects if these forces are there respective of what the material is so material is unaware about all those kind of uh, these axes the material has to resist the loads respective of uh, less of how we wish to like give the name or we can say whether they are horizontal vertical or otherwise uh, you know like we can say the material will even fail when the stresses exit beyond a permissible value so material provide the resistance based on how much hardness is there how much stiffness is there so it depends on you see that uh, what is the limit of uh, the loads are there or what is the limit of the stresses are there the normal stress or the shear stress so this is the key feature this is the inherent property of the material but it is irrespective of whether it's it's going in x direction y direction or z direction so this is a real important phenomena about the stresses that actually though the stresses either the normal stress or the serious stress in any of the direction they are the function of the material but the axes are not you see you know like uh, the absolutely depends on that what material is so you see here if we are talking about any ductile material then we have to be very you know like careful that actually what is the stress limits are so once you see you define the material absolutely you see the stress levels are coming that okay you we can go like you see if we have the normal mild steel then we are always using you see 220 mega pascal that means you see this is the limiting value under that you see if whether we can go for the elastic deformation and if we are going beyond that then we can say we are going for the plastic deformation and that you see you know like for those limits we can define by the modulus of elasticity and other modulus so there are you see lot many uh, coefficients are there based on which material you are using but the stresses are absolutely the function of uh, this material but the material is the whatever the uh, this is uh, normal stress and shear stresses along these axis they are not the function of the material itself thus you see the fundamental problem in any of the engineering design because we are using all those kind of material and the different kind of loadings are there in that so this fundamental problem in the engineering design is to determine the maximum normal stress and the maximum shear stress and at, at any particular uh, point in a body that means you see uh, we, we don't know that actually you see if we are applying the load and somewhere you see the shear stresses are maximum normal stresses are not maximum whether and uh, whether this uh, material will sustain or it will fail so we have to be very careful or we need to design that component whether this can sustain under these uh, uh, these values of the stresses or under these types of stresses are not so the first aim in 
uh, any of the component design is to know that whether what is the maximum stress and at what point these stresses are exerting or this uh, you know like executing within those object and there is no reason to believe appropriately that sigma x or sigma y or tau x y are the maximum value you see it is not that actually they are somewhat you see they have some value because if you are talking about sigma x or sigma y they are simply you see the normal stress component so respective whether we are pulling or compression they are simply the tensile or compressive forces divided by the effective area but if you are talking about the tau x y even it is you see you know, like uh, this is nothing but the uh, as per the plane like tau x y is there so if you are considering this tau uh, this x and y plane so the these forces are parallel to the axis but they are not having the maximum value. So, you see, we need to be, you know, like chosen the maximum value out of which. So, rather the maximum stresses may associate themselves with the other planes located at Q. Thus, it becomes imperative to determine the values of uh, sigma q as well as tau q. So, you see once we know that okay now here in this particular object uh, or whatever the component uh, we have a point where the maximum stresses can occur due to the uh, variety of loading then our main uh, focus is to calculate that actually which stress is maximum first and what is the value or what is the limiting value based on that you see you know like we can you know like uh, design the factor of safety and we can you know like uh, we just decide the factor of safety and corresponding designs are there of the component. So the conclusion of whole discussion says that actually though stresses is one point to calculate within the structure but the distribution stresses are very very important and we must know that what is the location of the maximum and the minimum stresses are there, the normal stresses as well as the shear stresses, so that we can appropriately design the engineering component uh, which are under the influence of various forces. So, here you see now if you are talking about the shear stress because we just want to know that actually where the shear uh, stresses are there and, and if we have a normal plane then whether this plane can sustain under the maximum or minimum shear stresses or not. So, here you see you know like uh, this plane says that actually the force P if you are talking about these. So, these are you see the parallel you know like the planes are there and this force P is exerting in this direction and we have a datum over which you see there is a force which is going towards the di uh, this direction. So, if we see the nature of force then we found that these forces are the parallel forces along this plane. So, we have there is a plane or we can say the central axis LM in, in of this object and whatever the forces are applying here they are simply parallel to these things and that is why we can say that whatever the stresses which are inducing due to the application of these forces they are the shear stresses and they, they are very much you know like uh, we can say well established uh, things are there within this region. So, we must know that actually at which region within this object the shear stresses are maximum so that we can easily uh, design those components by taking the different value of the factor of safety. Okay. So, if the applied load P consists of the two equal and opposite parallel forces as we discussed in the previous case not in the same line because if the same line is there then definitely it is the axial uh, force we can say and these are due to these forces we have the normal stresses. But here as we found that though they are the parallel and opposite forces but they are not exactly on the same axis so we have the shear stresses. Then there is a uh, you know like the tendency of, for one part of the body or another part to slide over the another and that is why you see the shearing is there or shear for uh, shear from the other part across any section LM. So, obviously you see this is the great tendency of the shear stresses that actually uh, they are always making the shear plane all amongst the center line or we can say the neutral axis and neutral axis is always you see the axis where this centroid is existing or we can say where all layers are to be well settled or we well equilibrium within this object. So, as we discussed about the shear stresses they are always set up in the object in the parallel planes. So, because of these you know like the loads we found that the shear stresses are there and they have a tendency to make the shear across this section and that section we are uh, telling in this particular figure is LM section. If the cross section at uh, this section LM you know like measured parallel to the load which is A then we can say that the average value of shear stress is the load application which is you see the inducing the shear stresses divided by a or we can say P is nothing but the shear force or shear load. The shear stress you know like is a tangential to the area or which it acts. So, this is the great you know like uh, the meaning of the shear stress is because as we have seen that actually as far as the normal stress component is concerned they are you see always act parallel to 
the uh, this uh, surface uh, the area of matter concerned but here you see whatever the area which we are concerning or which these stresses are being set up or these loads are there these are always you see the tangential to the whatever the uh, these stresses are coming they are always tangential to the area of concern so which we need to be very careful that actually once we we are just if we want to find out that where is the maximum stresses what is the minimum stresses are there then we need we have to be very careful that actually what is the area under which these tangential you know like forces or the stresses are coming within those object so if the shear stress varies from point to point as you see you know like uh, we discussed in uh, the previous lectures that actually if we have an irregular geometry where the forces are acting but the forces are not uniformly distributed because the different different forces are there like uh, if you have a structure at some point you see some 10, 20, 30 newtons are there at some point it is a 50 newton is there and it is of different nature some, na some forces are of uh, tensile nature some forces are having the compressive nature if this kind of you know like the structure is there and if you want to find it out the shear stresses of uh, you know like within this structure then uh, as I told you that actually we need to discretize the domain into the different segments of the forces and then once we know that okay now these are the you know like for if we have some 7, 10 segments what we need to do here we need to calculate the shear stresses for individual segments like segment 1 to segment 10 and then correspondingly we need to integrate those things. So if we have well defined reasons then there is no problem you see because the uniform uh, you know like uh, the structure is there and the uniformly distributed forces are there but if we don't have that kind of structure then what we need to do we need to define that actually where is the uh, this area of uh, the area is less or area is more or where is the stress concentration is there if you see more stress concentration then we need to take uh, care of the you know like uh, the by taking more factor of safety and we need to design accordingly so if you are defining the shear stresses for those kind of reasons where the irregularities are there how we can define we just define the limit for individual reasons and we are defining the delta p by delta a for that particular reasons and then sum up to get the final value of the shear stress so this is uh, one meaning but you see you know like uh, if we are discussing about the general shear stresses then we found that always uh, there is a tendency of the shear stress to move the object in one of the direction but if we want to maintain as we discussed in the previous section only that actually if you want to maintain the equilibrium of an object then we always need an equal and opposite stresses and those stresses are known as the complementary stresses so if you see this figure then we have this figure you see on uh, you know like the plane a b or c d there is a stress component on this and this is stress component if we are denoting by sigma or uh, this uh, tau then these things are there and these you know like the dash is showing that the shear plane is th this is my shear plane or which these stresses are occurring so if i am saying that if i have a, a b c d which is a you know like rectangular element uh, which has a, you know like the side of x y z all these three mutually perpendicular sides uh, or to the plane of uh, you know like the paper then we can say that the shear is you know like uh, shear stresses are existing at uh, this uh, ab as well as the cd plane okay so now you see uh, if we if we exactly you know like figure out this uh, particular problem then we found that uh, this uh, uh, shear stress is always tries to tend uh, this object towards the clockwise direction you see here you know like uh, this shear stress always influencing this segment of element just go towards this direction while this one is also just tries to you know like tending this element towards this direction the cd portion so that means you see you know like if we combine both the effect then we you know like we observe that there is a tendency of this uh, uh, element under the influence of this shear stress which is moving towards the clockwise directions so but if you want to maintain the equilibrium side then we need the equal and opposite uh, at these two faces like at uh, ad and cb which is exactly equal and opposite to the applied stresses applied shear stress sigma so here you see it is obvious that these stresses will form a couple as I told you that and the couple magnitude is uh, this uh, tau into xz that is the force into y so that is the couple so tau into xz will the force exerting at xz plane into the y distance which will give you the couple always try to tend towards the clockwise direction which can only be balanced by tangential forces on the plane as I told you in the AD and BC these two parallel for these two parallel sides and these are known as the complementary stresses or we can say the existence of shear stresses on the sides of AB and CD of the element uh, implies that the shear must be also uh, if, if the shear stresses are there there must be counterbalance shear stresses and those uh, counterbalance shear stresses are known as the complementary shear stresses on the uh, on the other side of uh, 
the element to maintain the equilibrium. So this is you see the one form of uh, the shear stresses. So if, you are, if I am saying that the sigma is the shear stress then sigma dash is the complementary shear stresses and if the sigma dash uh, be the complementary shear stresses in inducing on the plane AD and BC then we can easily maintain the equilibrium by taking moment by you see if we have on the one side of this sigma into XZ so if the XZ is the plane and if you multiply so sigma into xz is the force and if you multiply by y then we have the total moment which is exactly equal and opposite to the uh, uh, couple which is coming due to the complementary shear stress. So it is the sigma dash which is complementary shear stress into yz so that is now the total force in the yz plane into distance in x. So now you see if you compare both the things then you will find that sigma equals to sigma dash thus every shear stress is accom accom accompanied by equal complementary shear stresses. So you see we, we need a balanced part opposite which is equal and opposite to the shear stresses if you want to maintain the equilibrium of any component okay. So you see shear stresses and complementary shear stresses are you see the two forms of a coin which is always there to maintain the equilibrium of a object. Then you see you know like uh, till now whatever we have discussed we, have, we were discussing about uh, you know like the regular geometry at the end you see we have the force application because of the force application we have the stresses, shear stress, normal stress component even in the shear stresses different different shear stresses are there the different uh, outer surface of those things by taking the oblique planes and, uh, by taking the normal planes and all. But if you want to calculate that you see inside those things that means if the if you want to check that what is exactly happening within you know like uh, at different uh, points in the object by uh, uh, under the application of uh, forces then you see we need to check it out the stresses on the oblique plane. That means you see we need to cut the plane at an, a theta angle which is not uh, essential that it has to pass through from the center of the origin or we can say the center of mass of this object. It can pass from the initial part or the lower part or any part of that. And if we cut that plane and if we want to check it out that what the stresses are there, the normal stress component, shear stress component, that all the kind of information which we are going to discuss under the uh, heading of stresses on the oblique plane. So till now you see we have you know like deal with either the pure, uh, pure normal direct stress or pure shear stress. In many of the instances however both direct and shear stresses acts and the resultant stresses across any section will be neither normal nor tangential to. Uh, any plane. That means this is the realistic situation that actually if you want to check it out that where is the maximum shear stress is there, where is the maximum normal stress is there, where is the maximum uh, the minimum normal stress or minimum shear stress then uh, whatever the analysis which we have done in the previous cases that is not uh, sufficient or that is not you see the perfect to uh, get the all uh, you know like uh, answers. So what we need to do here we need if we want to do the realistic analysis then always we need to check it out that actually what is there, what the stress levels are there under the oblique plane. So you see here a plane of stress, a plane state of stress in any two dimensional you know like the state of stress uh, in a sense that the stress component in one direction you know like uh, all the stress components are there they are all equals to zero. That means you see you know like till now you see if uh, we discussed uh, if you just focused on that we discussed that uh, we have the uh, stress tensors in which the nine components are there but uh, and but all three all, all nine components or we can say three by three ma matrix is valid if we have all you know like the triaxial straight uh, the state of stre uh, stress is there or we have all three mutually perpendicular axis is. But if you are talking about the two dimensional state of stress that means you see the one direction is gone. So if you are saying that if I am considering only x and y this x direction and the y direction that means there is no stress means we I am assuming that uh, the there is no stress component is there in the ver uh, this uh, vertical direction or I should say the z direction. So what has happened you see this kind of you know like the plane stress or I should say that actually the two dimensional plane stress is always uh, calculating for uh, these uh, two directions and that is why it is known as the plane stress that means for xy plane, yz plane or xz plane that means you see one direction is uh, uh, just uh, we are assuming that there is uh, this uh, dire other direction is not existing. So here you see if, it, if we consider this case then we found that actually that this is you know like uh, the plane stress is there which is only there in the xy, dire uh, XY direction so you see the sigma z or tau yz or tau zx means uh, either uh, the normal stress component in the z direction or the shear stress component in the z direction which is coming due to the force in the z direction like you see here tau yz means the y is the domain and the z is force or 
tau zx means the uh, z is the domain and uh, this uh, x is the force that means you see these stresses are not exerting not existing in the plane stress okay so this is the plane stress which is always there in the two d plane so now you see in under the two uh, two dimensional state of stress or plane stress consider a general case in which we have a bar which is under the influence of the force in the y direction only so if you see this figure then you see here we have a two dimensional object this is a rectangular bar and the force is the tensile pulling is there in the y direction only so now if you see this thing then we found that actually these due to these you know like the force component in the uh, y direction we have a tensile pulling the tensile forces are there this, uh, and due to these tensile forces we have the tensile stresses in the y direction only so we have the sigma y so sigma y is nothing but equals to if you if, if you consider this uh, ba is a saxon then we found that the sigma y is nothing but equals to the applied force divided by the area but if we want to check it out the oblique stresses of the uh, stresses at the oblique plane then we need to cut the plane at this bc so this you see now ba is a normal plane which we have discussed in the previous cases bc is a oblique plane if you cut this plane by this saxon at an at, at an angle theta this uh, so now we want to calculate that actually what the stresses are there of the oblique plane so we can say these the stresses at the oblique plane are sigma theta that is the normal stress component tau theta that is the shear stress component and they are you see exerting or on this ob oblique plane by these we can simply denote it by this sigma theta and tau theta so you see now if we cut this portion so now we have this uh, oblique plane and we can simply denote uh, we can show by you know like uh, if we have a unit cube simply cut that unit cube and now we have you know like uh, these all three directions so what, what we have this is my a b c you see this is a b where uh, this part was there or which we have the sigma y and we have this bc of which the plane is cutting so this is my oblique plane and this is you see the straight line where you see you know like uh, we are considering the sigma y or in the y direction so thickness of this element in the z direction is always thin because we are considering that there is no element is you know like observing under that and it is taken as the unity so because you see you know like this is the unit cube so we can we need we have to consider not we need to we have to consider the, the, that there is a unit thickness is there all across these uh, all across this particular uh, this structure so we have unit uh, unity means unit depth is there of these kind of things so if you consider this you know like the plane that if you are you know like uh, if you are focusing on the main plane then we have the sigma y okay but if you are considering the oblique plane then we have the sigma theta tau theta and if we resolve these stresses then we have the theta over this particular part so now you see we just want to set up the relationship between the sigma theta and tau theta that means the stresses stress components at the oblique plane and the stress components at the uh, outer surfaces that means you see the sigma y so you see the stress acting at a point is represented by the stress acting on the faces of the element enclosing to the point that means whatever the you know like the faces are there we, we have to concern about all those stress uh, components which uh, are there which are existing all around this uh, plane so the, st uh, the stresses changes uh, the stresses change with the inclination of the planes passing through that point that is the stress on a face of the element vary as the angular position of the element changes so obviously you see you know like because as we change the angular position definitely there is a uh, change in the magnitude is there of the stresses because if you relate those things then we found that actually there are two resolution is there of the forces in the x direction and the y direction and it is always being focused by the cos or the sine theta so how what the exact relation is there and based on those relations we can easily found that actually if you change the angle there is you know like the difference is there in the magnitude of those stresses in, the, in, in this figure you see you know like uh, we have seen that uh, the uh, object is under the influence of uh, the tensile forces in the y direction that means you see the tensile uh, uh, load is there under uh, you know like uh, the influence of these stresses that means uh, we have the tensile stresses in the y direction and we just want to see that if we cut the plane under the influence of this force uh, then what the exact relation is there of the you know like the sigma theta or tau theta which is which are nothing but the stress components at uh, the oblique plane with the only sigma y that means we are only considering there is no stress component is there only we have this uh, shear component so now if uh, if you are simply you know like uh, carefully watching about those things then we found that there is a unit depth is there 
under the triangular portion of ABC. So, if you resolve the forces perpendicular to BC in the previous case, then we found that we have you know like just in the perpendicular part sigma theta into BC that is the plane into unit depth because we are considering the depth is unit is exactly equal to the sigma y into sin theta because now you see only the normal force is there. So, normal stress component is there in the y direction. So, sigma theta BC into 1 exactly matching by sigma y into sin theta of AB because AB is the plane where the sigma y sin theta is acting towards that into y. So, if you resolve those things then we found that actually AB by BC is nothing but equals to sin theta or we can replace this AB which is you see the plane of the y the uh, perpendicular to the y axis is nothing but equals to BC sin theta. So, from resolving these equations we found that we have sigma theta BC into 1 is equals to you know like if you put those things then we have sigma y sin theta into BC sin theta into 1 or we have the stress at the normal stress component at the oblique plane is equals to sigma theta is equals to sigma y sin square sin 2 theta because if you resolve those things then obviously you see the sin square theta is there. So, you can simply you know like resolve that part and it is equals to that or you see you know like the BC BC will cancel out. Meaning is pretty simple that actually we can easily relate the stress component at the oblique plane you know like uh, by uh, whatever the force influencing is there of the object. So, again you see this is the normal stress component then what is the shear stress component we can again easily calculate by that tau theta into BC in the different domains. So, tau theta into BC which is the cutting plane into 1 is equals to sigma y cos theta into AB. Uh, sin theta into 1. So, you see you know like as we discussed in the previous case that AB by BC is cos theta. So, you can simply replace AB equals to uh, this BC cos theta or tau uh, this uh, tau theta BC into 1 will give you sigma y cos theta into BC sin theta into 1 or we can say that it is nothing but the tau theta is equals to half of sigma y sin into sin of 2 theta. So, now you see these either the sigma theta in the previous case you see which is uh, uh, this tau y sin of 2 theta or uh, the sin square theta or we can say this uh, tau theta which is half of sigma y sin of 2 theta they are only coming because of the influence of the pure normal stress there is no shear component is there but because of the pure uh, this normal forces we have both the component at the oblique plane means we have the normal stress component we have the shear stress component and what the values are there we can easily get. So, this is the beautiful you know like the meaning of these things are there that we can get uh, all those values though the shear stress we are not there is no shear forces are there there is no parallel forces are ex exerting on the different layers of the structure but if only the normal stress is there that means if only pure you know like the tensile or the compressive forces are there at any of the axis we have both the component within the structure like the normal stress component and the shear stress component the values are these so you see here again we can resolve these cases by putting the plane at different angles like if theta is at 90 degree then whatever the BC which is the cutting plane was there will exactly parallel to the AB plane or which the sigma y was exerting. So, this uh, we can say that uh, this tau theta whatever you see if you put the theta 90 then this is tau theta okay which is exactly equals to 0 that means there is there will be no direct stress or the normal stress is there or uh, by examining the equations 1 or 2 whatever you see for the sigma theta and tau theta we can simply conclude that the value of uh, direct stress sigma theta is maximum uh, and it is equal to the sigma y when the theta is exactly at 90. Means you see if you cut the plane the theta exactly parallel to the BC uh, or exactly parallel to the AB then we have the exact value whatever the values are exerting at the top of the surface if, if you want to compute the uh, this. Uh, normal stresses at the different layers of the structure. And the second case is there if the shear stress tau theta has a maximum value a, which is equals to uh, half of the sigma y at 45. That means you see if we cut the plane at exactly 45 degree then whatever the value of the shear stresses are there these are half of the max uh, half of the applied uh, this uh, normal stress. And the third part if the shear stress sigma theta and or tau theta are not simply you know like resolution of uh, sigma y that means you see you know like if only uh, these uh, other two stresses stress components are not exerting then we cannot relate the sigma theta or tau theta uh, with the sigma y. That means you see you know like uh, we need we have to be very careful that actually there are maximum or minimum values of uh, normal stress and the shear stresses are exerting even if the shear stresses are not being exerted on the outside of the surface. 
So, now you see here uh, we have a material which is subjected under the Pure shear stress. That means in the previous case we had discussed about when the normal stress component is there and you know like the material is subjected by that uh, normal forces. But here you see we are considering one element uh, as you can see here in this uh, figure that this element is under the influence of the shear forces and the shear forces are being applied at these two you know like the sides which is AB side this tau XY is there and the DC side which is tau XY is there. So, here because of these tau XY now the see the stress the distribution is there in this particular you know like the portion and we have the another you know like the uh, as I told you that actually the complementary series stresses are there the tau x y the tau y x which is exactly equal and opposite uh, to the these uh, shear stresses which are being applied. That means you see here there is no normal stress component in this structure only the purely shear stresses are there the uh, complementary shear stresses are there just to balance those things. Uh, and because of that now we just want to check it out that actually what the, the stress components means the normal as well as the shear stress components are there at the oblique plane. So, you see here we simply cut the plane uh, at you see the PC this is the cutting plane the oblique plane I should say and at the PC you see now we just want to check it out that what the stress components are. So, we have the sigma theta and the tau theta at these PC plane which is you see the sigma theta in this direction and the tau theta in this direction. So, now you see the complementary series stresses which I, I was talking about uh, is exactly equal and opposite uh, you know like uh, effect is there against uh, that the, uh, the applied series stresses on the two different sides of AD and BC in order to you know like the prevent the rotation of the element or we can say we just if we want to maintain, maintain the equilibrium of the element we have to you know like put the complementary series stresses. Since the applied and the series stress, uh, stresses are equal and opposite then you see you know like uh, uh, of the value of x y planes then you see we can say that the uh, this object is under the equilibrium part. Therefore, you see you know like both are being uh, represented by the tau x y because the tau x y and tau y x uh, they are equal and opposite. So, it has the same physical meaning uh, if you want to apply those things. So, now come to you know like uh, the equilibrium portion of the PBC where PB is you know like the applied part is there and the PC is that part where the cutting uh, or we can say the oblique part is there. So, if you look at closely then you find that you see we have the sigma theta which is exactly at these point you see you know which is coming out from this uh, PBC plane and we have the tau theta which is exactly you see the perpendicular uh, to these things. That means, the shear stress is there of this the normal stress is there and if you want to check it out the outer surface that actually what exactly the stresses are being set up. So, you can find that you see you know like uh, this these component the tau x y cos theta and the tau x y sin theta are the resolved you know like the forces are there if you resolve at the theta angle because we have the tau x y which is this one you see you know like the tau x y is there which is well set up on this plane or on this plane you see you can see this this is tau x y this is tau x y. So, now if you resolve this if you resolve in this way means if we have the tau x y perpendicular to this y axis. So, if you resolve at the theta you find that uh, this is the tau x y uh, cos theta this is tau x y sin theta in this direction. So, we have both components tau x y cos theta tau x y sin theta just to balance just to counterbalance the normal stress as well as the shear stress due to the oblique plane. So, now you see if you resolve those things then you find that assuming the unit depth again you see we are assuming that uh, whatever the structure which we have it has the unit depth uh, and if you want to resolve the you know like uh, those forces then we need to see that actually what exactly the forces are there just perpendicular to the uh, this oblique plane PC. So, you see here we have the direction uh, sigma th uh, theta which is exactly normal to the plane PC. So, if you consider the PC where the sigma th this is PC you see this is PC and sigma theta is exactly normal to this plane. So, if you resolve this then you find that sigma theta into PC into 1 because of the unit depth exactly equals to the tau x y into P b cos theta which is exactly you see you know like e equating that part plus tau x y into B c sin theta it is the composition of these or if you divided uh, these things then uh, at the end you see what we have you see you know like uh, if you just re, uh, remove those things then we have uh, particular sigma theta P c equals to tau x y P b cos theta plus tau x y B c sin theta means that here we have only the application of tau x y means the only pure shear is there, but because of that you see we have the normal stress component of the oblique plane and we have the uh, shear stress component of the oblique plane. So, now you see you know like uh, if you resolving these things as I told you that P b by P c equals to sin theta or B c by P c equals to cos theta. So, if you uh, put uh, those P b and P c value in the previous, previous equation 
then you found that uh, sigma theta pc into 1 at the left hand side is equals to tau xy cos theta into sin theta into pc which is equals to pb and plus tau xy cos theta into in place of bc you can put uh, sin theta pc. So now you see pc, pc will cancel out because it is exerting on the both the side. So we have what uh, this is uh, the sigma theta into 1 is equals to tau xy sin theta cos theta plus tau xy cos theta sin theta. So if you sum up then you found that we have sigma theta equals to tau xy 2 times sin theta cos theta. So at the end we have the sigma theta which is occurs you know like which is occurring in these element due to the purely shear stress uh, tau xy is equals to sigma theta equals to tau xy sin of 2 theta. So this is you see the normal stress component you know like because of the tau xy and again you see if it is all the forces in the perpendicular plane you know like uh, then you found that the normal stress component is there but if you found that if the shear stress component is there like uh, the pc plane is there and if the parallel forces are there and due to the parallel forces we have the shear stress component so if you want to resolve the shear stresses which is you know like uh, at the uh, oblique plane and if you want to compare both the things with the oblique plane to the uh, ma main plane then you found that actually we have this tau xy pc into 1 is equals to tau xy pb sin theta uh, or we can say you see uh, minus tau xy bc cos theta the negative sign is coming because you see you know like uh, the stress because you know like we want to apply the complementary shear stresses so that actually whatever the rotation is there we can prevent that rotation you know because of the complementary shear stress. So always the negative sign is coming in resolving the shear stresses. So again converting those various quantities into you know like the terms of pc we found that we have the tau theta means uh, the shear stress at the theta is equals to minus tau xy cos of 2 theta. So the meaning is that we have normal stress component, we have shear stress component which is coming due to the influence of uh, the shear stress tau xy and which has the different values of uh, like sigma theta is there then we have the tau xy sin, two, time, sin 2 theta. If the uh, shear stress is there sigma uh, the sigma uh, the, the, the tau theta which is equal to minus of uh, tau xy cos of 2 theta. The negative sign means that you know like as I told you the sense of the tau theta opposite to the assumed one. So obviously you see you know like always it comes that actually if you are not concerning about the complementary shear stresses or the negative shear stresses then you cannot say that whatever the element which you have chosen it is under the uh, equilibrium position because of the applied stress. So always we need to assume that the applied stresses are there along the parallel uh, you know axis is but we have you see the other side of uh, these you know the complementary shear stresses which can balance these stresses. So we can say from the other equations we have sigma theta which is tau xy sine of 2 theta. The equation 1 this one represents that the maximum value of sigma theta is tau xy obviously this when the theta is at 45 degree means you see if you cut the plane at 45 degree you have you see you will find that the maximum normal stress which is exactly equal to the shear stress applied shear stress when you cut the plane at the 45 degree and if you, you know like uh, uh, just introducing by considering the equation of this by taking you see the tau theta equals to minus uh, tau x cos of 2 theta if you put that uh, that particular thing then you found that actually the uh, this uh, say, uh, tau theta is exactly equals to 0 that means it indicates that the maximum value of tau theta is tau xy when theta is exactly 0 or 90 degree. That means you see if whatever the PC plane which we have chosen if it is at uh, just perpendicular 90 degree or if it is that means if it is exactly at the PB or if it is perpendicular to AB that means just you know like the, this pa parallel part is there then we have the maximum value of shear stress that is equal to the applied shear stress tau xy but if it is you see if we are cutting those uh, planes at 45 degree then only normal stress component is exerting that is uh, a sigma theta there is no shear stress portion is there at the 45 degree of angle. From the equations all you see either sigma theta in the one equation or tau theta uh, 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 equation 2 we can easily calculate the maximum or minimum values of the normal as well as the shear stress component. So from equation 1 it may be noted that the normal component sigma theta has maximum or minimum value of uh, plus tau xy if the tension is there you see if the tensile forces are there minus tau xy if the compressive forces are there on a plane where 
you see plus minus 45 degree of angle of rotation is there. That means, you see if you cut the uh, plane at 45 degree of angle, whatever the planes are there of these two planes, if I say that uh, at these planes, the, uh, the normal stresses are always maximum the sigma theta, which is equal to the applied shear stresses. Applied shear. And these planes uh, are tangential, uh, you know, like if, 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 uh, if you want to check it out, the, you know, like uh, the shear stresses at the tangential plane, that means you see 0 or 90, then you will find that. Uh, the uh, shear stress component has the maximum value and if you want to check it out the you know like at this plane where these uh, sigma theta is maximum means the 45 degree the tangential plane where the shear stress component is 0. So, you see you can you know like vary all those things you can check the minimum as well as the maximum values of sigma theta or tau theta cor uh, corresponding to the uh, different planes. Hence, the system of pure stress which we discussed recently you see here produce an and equivalent you know like direct stress system one set of the compressive and the one set of the tensile each located at the 45 degree to the original you know like uh, these directions uh, as depicted to the figure. So, if you see this figure you see we have you know like this component which is influencing by only shear stresses you see these shear stresses are there. Now, if I rotate at 45 degree so you see now this is the rotated plan which is exactly at the 45 degree. So, what we have? We have only you see at the 45 degree of angle only these stresses are absolutely converted into the normal stresses. That means you see here these stresses are being applied the shear stresses counter shear stresses are there, but at the end you see if you rotate this element simply by rotating this element all the shear stresses are being exactly converted to the normal stresses or we can say if you come down to these things you see we have this element which is under the influence of the shear stresses and if you compute those things then you find that you see at these planes where the 45 degree planes are there this one sigma is you know like sigma theta I should say is tau x y or sigma which is sigma theta also is minus tau x y. So, we have both the you know like uh, these stresses are there, but, but the shear stress pure shear stress will give you only the normal stress component at the 45 degree of angle. Now, you see here this third case the previous two cases which we discussed uh, when the material is uh, under the influence of uh, pure stress and when the material is under uh, influence of pure shear stress. Now, when material is subjected by two mutually perpendicular direct stresses means you see we have direct stresses direct stresses, but both are mutually perpendicular like in the x direction or the y direction and they are acting in the tangential direction. So, now you see consider the rectangular element which, uh, which is being shown here in this diagram of unit depth. So, again you see we are considering of the unit depth subjected to a system of two direct stresses both are tensile as I told you on the right angles of each other. This means both are mutually perpendicular. So, if you see that then you will find that the sigma x sigma x is there on these two you know like sides of uh, the rectangular element sigma y sigma y again you see we have you know, like these two um, that uh, these uh, tensile stresses are there in the y direction. So, now you see if you want to check it out because of the influence of these two mutually perpendicular stresses x and y what is the you know like the stresses at the oblique plane again cut the plane here by this uh, AC and we just want to check it out that actually what is what is the value of the sigma theta and tau theta is there at that. So, cut the plane and we have now you see the two different you know like reasons at one reason now we just want to check it out at AC the sigma theta and tau theta is there, but other two plane this is one we have sigma you know sigma x. So, how these how we can resolve these things like sigma x cos theta sigma x y uh, sigma x sin theta or here sigma y cos theta which will come here means sigma y sin theta and sigma x cos theta in the other direction. So, now you see we just want to resolve these stress components as per the value of uh, uh, these uh, sigma theta and tau theta with the sigma x and sigma y. So, only shear stress is there, there is no uh, only pure uh, this normal stress is there, there is no shear stress component. So, now you see with within the equilibrium portion of the triangular part A B C, if you if we want to resolve uh, these uh, forces, then we have first sigma theta is into A C. So, A C is you see the inclined part. So, sigma theta into A C into unit depth that is 1 is equals to sigma y sin theta into A B where this A B is acting into 1 plus sigma x which is you see cos theta into B C into 1. So, now you see converting this uh, A this A B and B C in terms of A C. So, that A C cancel out from this side. So, we can simply you know like resolve those forces we have sigma theta is equal to sigma y sin square theta because A B by A C is sin theta B C by A C is cos theta. So, plus sigma x cos square theta or further we can say that the cos square theta minus sin square theta is cos 2 theta or we can say it is 1 minus cos of 
2 theta by 2 is nothing but equals to sin square theta. So, if you you know like uh, do this kind of manipulation, then we found that at the end that we have sigma theta is equals to 1 by 2 you know sigma y cos of 2 theta plus 1 by 2 sigma x cos of 2 theta or by rearranging those things we have the sigma theta because of the two mutually perpendicular stresses sigma x and sigma y we have the final uh, the stress at the oblique plane in the normal direction sigma theta is equals to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 which is not influenced by any theta. See this, this is a constant quantity. So, here, so this is one constant quantity and one is influenced by the theta. So, 1 sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into cos of 2 theta. So, we can you know like resolve these things that actually what is the value of the maximum or minimum sigma theta is there if we have the different angles like if means if you are cutting the plane at uh, theta equals to 0, 90, 45 or what like that. So, you can get those values. So, now you see resolving this parallel to AC then we have sigma theta AC into 1 is equals to minus tau of that because now you see you know like we just want to check it out the other component which is parallel to AC that means the shear component is there. So, minus tau xy cos of uh, q into AB into 1 which is you know like uh, due to that uh, uh, tau xy in uh, vertical direction AB or we can say tau xy BC into sin of theta into 1. The negative sign appears always you see because of the complementary series stresses ok. So, uh, to balance those uh, component. So, again you see converting those uh, all, all uh, variety of the components we found that actually what exactly the value of tau theta is. So, if you resolve those things uh, by equating the uh, segment uh, into the x as well as the y direction we have tau theta into ac into 1 is equals to uh, this uh, tau x in this particular figure we can find out the tau x into cos of theta into sin theta minus sigma y sin theta cos theta multiplied by ac. So, we can find out that uh, tau uh, the tau theta is nothing but equal to sigma x minus sigma y into sin theta cos theta or you can convert into 2 theta part. So, we have sigma x minus sigma y by sin of 2 theta. So, we have the final value of tau theta which is equals to sigma x minus sigma y into sin of 2, 2 theta. So, now you see by you know uh, by applying the two different forces at mutually perpendicular axis uh, we can also get the sigma theta or tau theta at the oblique plane by uh, measuring those values by sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into cos theta which will give you sigma theta, sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into sin 2 theta will give you the tau theta value. The conclusion of this whole discussion says that the following you know like uh, this conclusion which we can draw, drawn that the maximum direct stress can come you know like uh, because of by applying theta equals to 0 or 90 degree which is equals to exactly the sigma x plus sigma y by 2. That means you see if the mutually perpendicular stresses are there the maximum direct stress will be of sigma x plus sigma y by 2 which is equal to uh, which, which is coming when the theta is equals to 0 or 90 degree. Maximum shear stress is coming on the plane where the plane is applied you see at the 45 degree means you see here now the things are changing two mutually perpendicular axes are there, uh, stresses are there and uh, under the influence of these stresses we have the maximum value of series stress at an angle of 45 degree which is equals to sigma x minus sigma y by 2. So, we have you know like the maximum value of direct stress as well as the maximum value of series stress at the oblique plane if we apply these things. So, now in this all discussion we discussed that actually you see uh, you know like if uh, the pure shear stress a uh, pure normal stress is there pure shear stress is there or two mutually perpendicular pure normal stress is there then how we can get the stresses at the oblique plane irrespective of whether it is a sigma theta or tau theta. So, in this lecture you see you know like you found that actually uh, we, we have to be very careful that what is the value of the maximum and the minimum stresses are there normal as well as the shear stress. So, in the next lecture we are going to discuss that actually what what has happened if the two mutually perpendicular axes are there and it is being influenced by not only the normal stress, but the combination of the shear stress means you see now we have the combined forces perpendicular as well as the parallel forces then how we can resolve the normal stress and the shear stress component to the uh, both uh, you see at the oblique plane as well as the reference plane. Thank you. Thank you.